Hi everyone, welcome to Math and Logic. Today's video will be a bit different. We will try to, step by step, answer one of famous guesstimate questions from job interviews, supposedly at Goldman Sachs or Google. How many ping pong balls can fit into an airplane? For example, Boeing 747? I used to think it's a stupid question, but it's not about the answer. Really, it's supposed to reveal your way of thinking, imagination, attention to detail and determination in the face of a complex challenge. While you can find answer to this question on some websites, with all kinds of math formulas and calculations, in this video I will show you how to find answer relatively close to the truth with only what you have in your head and whatever is found in the room during your job interview. Such way of thinking and problem solving will help you when you face another guesstimate problem, not just this specific one. I will have also some small tips how to negotiate best conditions for you when you get such a problem to solve. So let's get it started. Let's say you went for a job interview, you are sitting in some office and everything goes great so far. Now you hear this question. How many ping pongs can fit in an airplane? Or a jetliner? Or something more specific like Boeing 747 or 737? First, deal with the airplane choice, if there is any. If they just said an airplane or any Boeing, then choose the best for you. So the one most familiar to you, maybe even the one you know specific sizes for. Don't ask which airplane. Use this room they left you for your advantage and state which plane you are choosing. What if they stated it's for example Boeing 747, but you have no idea what it looks like, what is the size of this specific model, but at the same time you are familiar with let's say Boeing 737? State this openly, that if they don't give you any sizing of the airplane, then you prefer a different one and ask if they agree. This is a very reasonable proposal, so take the initiative. So let's say they gave you or you negotiated Boeing 737, most familiar to myself, but method we use here will be quite universal and I will also give you a DN sizing for 747. This is what information we need. On the ping pong part, diameter of the ball, and this will let us estimate how many of them fit, for example, in cubic meter. In the second part regarding the airplane, we'll estimate the length and diameter of its body or fuselage and this will let us calculate volume of the airplane needed to calculate the final result. As we start, one important note. Interviewer wants to know your thinking process. So at each step, go through it in your mind, assembling something useful and then state that out loud. This will allow you to avoid saying something incredibly stupid that pops up in your mind first and at the same time it will let them hear your sound thinking process. So step one. What is the size of a ping pong ball? It's possibly the most important factor to estimate as accurately as possible because it will be cubed, raised to the power of 3, so missing it by merely 10% will skew the result by 33%. So is it 3, 4, 4.5 4 or 5 centimeters? You can take a wild guess or make an informed guess. If you want to do the latter, imagine you hold ping pong ball in your fingers. What distance do you see? How big would it be on your palm? Can you use pen and paper to draw it? It can help a lot to guess correctly. Is there paper with lines or grid in the room you can use? Is there a ruler or something else to measure the distance you have in mind or on the paper? Or maybe they even have a ping pong ball you can examine. Just ask. Decide on this parameter and remember it. My guesstimate was 4 cm. Next step is how much space it takes or to simplify our job, how many of those balls can fit into one cubic meter? If you remember not so basic formula for volume of a sphere, it may help or it might make it even more complicated or deceptive. The formula is as follows, 4 thirds of pi times radius cubed. Now imagine those balls in the box. There is quite a lot of space between them, so you have to include this in the calculation. Otherwise you would have to squeeze them so there is no space left between them. Actually, failing to acknowledge this factor will probably be a big mistake in the eyes of the interviewers. Remember, most important is not the accuracy of the end result itself, but your thinking process and showing that you don't miss any important part of the problem. So how to deal with it? Instead of a bit complicated calculation based on a formula you might not remember, let's go straight to calculating number of balls in the cubic box. Let's imagine that those are not balls of 4 cm diameter, but rather 4 cm cubes. Or even better, that those balls are inside transparent little boxes. Compare it now with familiar images of packed balls and other spheres. There is still a lot of room left. 
If you recall image of, for example, ball pools or balls in box of claw machine, you'll likely notice that spheres tend to be packaged more tightly. Something more like this. Now let's guess what is the gain of this packaging comparing to the one easy to calculate with the cubes. What percentage more of those balls can fit in? Did you think 5 or 10 percent? If so, think again considering that this will save some space also in third dimension, which is hard to represent on the paper. My guess was 20 percent more. So it means that we have to add 20 percent at the end when we count how many 4 cm cubes fit into one cubic meter. And that's an easy one. 100 cm divided by 4 cm is 25. So in one such large box, 25 by 25 by 25 smaller ones will fit. We can calculate it and then add 20% or we can make it a bit easier for ourselves. 20% of 25 is 5. So let's add that 20% immediately so we can calculate 25 by 25 by 30, which is much easier and will give us our final result of this part. 25 squared is 625, which you should know by heart if you use the same method of multiplying two-digit numbers as I use. Now times 30. 6 times 3 is 18, 25 times 3 is 75, and 0 at the end. So in total it's 18,715. Round it to 19,000 for easier calculation. Or to 20,000 as I did, because I felt I still underestimated a bit that 20% gain. So the first part is done. 20,000 ping pong balls per cubic meter. That is the only number you have to remember from this part. In the second part, that will be posted next after this video, we'll work on the plane volume itself and get the final answer. The link will be right here. And if it's not posted yet, in the meantime you can check my other videos on logic puzzles and methods of quick calculations I use when solving such problems. If you like it and want more coming, then hit the like button, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part 2.